we already know men and women are different, but how we're different is pretty important to understand because when it comes right down to it, we tend to act like we're not different. We tend to try to get guys to behave the way we think they should, which essentially would be turning them into women, and we don't want that to happen. So we need to understand what those differences are and why they're important. First of all, there's the biology of emotions. You know, we are biologically different. I mean, you can tell that just by looking at a man and a woman that, you know, uh, we have different body parts. We'll put it that way. But our brains are also different. We are formed not only by our genetics, but by our environment to uh, experience and respond to things in different ways. Now, we can get into the biology of the brain more deeply at some point in time, but just know for now that men actually experience every emotion that we do, and they experience them actually more intensely than we do. The problem is that their environment teaches them not to express those emotions, so the experience is the same, but the expression is very different. The other thing that's very different is that men are sensitive to different things than women are. Women are sensitive to getting their feelings hurt. Men are more sensitive to things that attack their identity as men. So we're going to dive into that a little deeper today as well. The process that men go through in changing from little sensitive boys into grown-up men who seem to be insensitive, with the emphasis on they seem to be insensitive, is pretty traumatic, actually. If you've got a picture of your husband when he was about five, I would like you to hold that picture in your mind as we're talking today. But also, if you don't have a picture of him, maybe you've got a child that's about that age, or you know of a little boy about that age. And just hold on to that picture and imagine you've got this incredibly sensitive little human being who's sensitive to his mom, who's sensitive to, you know, hurting other people. Little boys are in incredibly empathic towards other kids. Imagine that and then imagine him being pushed away. Imagine him being shamed. Imagine him experiencing that day after day after day for his entire life. It's a huge deal. We go from, you know, cuddly, warm, sweet little boys that we just love to hold on to, to big boys don't cry, to suck it up, or <laughs> like I used to say in sports, rub some dirt on it and get on with the game. That's really a huge part of this developmental trauma that kids go through. And it's particularly difficult when there's not a father there to show the boy how to negotiate that transition. So um, that's another topic for another day as well. But it is something that virtually every man goes through. It's the process of shaping behavior. And shaping behavior is critically important. Women's behavior is shaped as well, but in very different ways. What you do predominantly to shape people is you use behavioral psychology. That means that people are either rewarded or punished for um, the behavior that those around them find acceptable. Not a bad idea. It's the way that life works. But in the process of shaping a little boy, there seems to be an excessive use of something called shame. And shaming is uh, socially acceptable for little boys, where it's not so acceptable for little girls. 